Good day to you, our distinguished viewers, and welcome to today's episode of Women on the Watch, powered by the Shaper's Act. I'm Wonola Data, you're the Shaper, and I want to say to you a very big thank you for joining us today. Women on the Watch is not just powered by the Shaper's Act, but at the Shaper's Act, we are committed to exposing time-tested principles for your practical application in your personal and relationship development matters. Today, we will be advancing that mission by looking at some important issues about our health and our well-being. And because of that, today's episode is titled Managing Burnout and Fatigue. Managing Burnout and Fatigue. Before we start, let's take our Bible reading, which is taken from Psalms 116 and verse 7. Psalms 116 and verse 7. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you. We well, thank you, Lord God of glory, because in your word, you said to us that you, will, you wish above all things that will prosper, even as our soul prospers. You want us to be in health. And so today, as we examine the topic, burnout and fatigue, we ask, oh God, that you will minister health to every soul that is suffering from burnout and fatigue. And we pray that you will open our eyes as we interrogate the subject so that that which we ought to do, we will do to ensure that our lives are not damaged by some mishaps in our own individual practices and habits. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Today, we have a guest with us and she's very competent to discuss the subject matter of burnout and fatigue. I'm speaking of no other than Pastor Mrs. Olubumi John. She's a certified psychiatric nurse, and uh, Olubumi John is not just a wife, she's also a mother, and she is the wife of the pastor in charge of province, RCCG Ogun Province 11. You are very welcome, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma. I'm so happy and delighted to have you with us because in the society that we live in, there is so much stress. And somehow globally, stress is becoming a big time issue. Mental health is becoming a big time issue. And so that is why we want to be able to expose people to understand what exactly is going on and then to empower them to be able to do something about the situation. So I want to start by asking the question, all right, what is called burnout and what is called fatigue? Are they the same or are they different? Well, thank you for having me, Ma. Like you rightly said, it's a global thing and it's becoming a, a, a global issue. And it's high time that people start recognizing when they are in burnout. Burnout can be described as a state of emotional, physical, mental exhaustion caused by excessive physical and mental stress. Mm -hmm. It can also be described as an overwhelming state of emotional, physical state of inability to carry, out, to carry um, on with, us, with uh, the no activities of daily life, to carry out activities and demands that have been set aside. It is so much overwhelming that some people do recognize it early and some don't. And fatigue can be said to be a state of tiredness, of extreme tiredness, mm -hmm. which is resulting from physical and mental state as well. Though at times people use it interchangeably, we can see fatigue is a major symptom from burnout. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. So fatigue is a symptom of burnout. Yes, it now, is. Now, uh, I think, interestingly, I think it was my daughter that had said to me one day, just looking at me, running all over the place, and, and, and she said to you, you are running on empty. 
So which one of it is running on empty? Is it fatigue or is it burnout? When you are, you are said to be running on empty. Like I said, fatigue is a major symptom of um, burnout. burnout okay. So when you are running empty, it's just mm -hmm. like a car driving. Mm -hmm. when, you, when there is nothing to run with it, yeah. it will definitely go dry. No more enthusiasm, so, uh, no, no more joy in what you do. Nothing. And so on and you so feel forth. exhausted. That's when it, com it goes to the extreme that you have no drive to do anything, anything. anymore. Great. So that means you are running empty. empty. You are okay. running on empty. Thank you. Great, great. Now, can you please... Uh, for the sake of the audience, okay. how do I recognize that I'm either having a burnout or fatigue? What are the signs and symptoms that w w I can say, okay, you know, check this, check that. Okay, I think I have burnout or I think I have fatigue. What are the signs and symptoms? Um, majorly, there are different signs and symptoms that you receive or that one sees. When, for instance, you're an enthusiast, you love what you do, and you suddenly find out that you have low drive, you have mood swings, you run out of, um, um, out of passion. When you become overwhelmed with activities of daily living, maybe your work, career, even at home, you should understand that you are going to burn out. When you have feelings of overwhelming activities, when you have low concentration, when you increase your procrastination. Normally, uh -huh. as humans, we do procrastinate time after time. But when it becomes extreme, you are running into burnout. Mm -hmm. And you have feelings of hopelessness. Mm -hmm. You have feelings of helplessness. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I'm just so tired. I can't just explain. You have no explanation for anything. Your immune system runs low. Mm -hmm. You have low appetite. You have mood swings. You have low and reduced motivation for anything you do, especially those that work a lot. Aha. Uh -huh. So yeah, those are actually signs. leading to my next question. Uh, right, because Ma really, uh, if, if I suddenly see that, you know, uh, I, I swing mood from this moment, I'm happy, this moment, I'm very sad. Uh, this moment, I'm patient, this moment, I'm angry. You know, and I'm having these mood swings and all of that. All right. You know, w what would you say is the cause? As in, before I can prevent something, at least I must know, what would tend to cause fatigue? What would tend to cause burnout? What causes it? What makes people to be exposed to the possibility and the chances of burnout and fatigue? Um, thank you, Ma. I would, um, in research and from my relationship with people, from my experience, I have seen that causes of burnout can be categorized into two. Okay. One, work-related issues, mm -hmm. two, the lifestyle of the person, okay. three, and the personality trait. Okay. Let me start with a um, work-related issue. Someone who is overly demanding. Hmm. When, the, when you have a job that is always demanding your time, hmm. your space, your energy, your mood, and everything, you should understand that this is leading me to burnout. Also, when there is work pressure, when you have uh, you work in a place and you're always put under constant pressure. In the morning, you have to meet up my target. I'm giving you to 2 p.m. You have to submit that <laughs> deadline. You, you know, all sorts and all manner of pressures coming upon you. You should realize that this is a cause. It's a trigger. Also, people who have um, no control over work. Okay. You're always walking, walking mm -hmm. from one job to the other, from one, you know, um, walk to the other, you just have to keep walking. They don't have a break. They Walker don't have a holics. limit. They are workaholics. They're always on the go mm -hmm. from one thing to the other. For instance, as um, um, personally, I'll, I'll, I'll use myself as an example. For instance, when I'm done from work, at times you have to just go to church, ensure that things are being done. From there you go home. From home you have to ensure that. So it's a cycle. And when you don't see that, when you don't see that coming, you have to ensure that you just have to take a break and you have to ensure that you take it calm. Also, when there is no uh, reward, for people who like to be rewarded mm -hmm. when they do certain things, exactly. when they feel to be recognized and they are failed to be recognized, so mm -hmm. they feel, oh, why should I continue mm -hmm. with this? So they feel, what's the, uh, what's the essence of continuing with such, with such um, mm. work? Also from the lifestyle, um, like I described earlier, working too much, 
Some people, they don't take no for an answer. They are the type that they would always want to ensure that deliver. things... I, I must <laughs> deliver. I just have to ensure that things run smoothly. Mm. They are very organized, very detailed people. I call them the perfectionists. Thank you. They Welcome to my world. <laughs> they are the perfectionists. They mm. want to ensure that, no, the table, is it set? Mm. Is this chair well arranged? Exactly. Are the cooks walking? Mm. Maybe for caterers who mm. always want to ensure that I deliver my job satisfactorily mm. and mm. they're always on the go. They always ensure, oh, you're not cooking that thing. They'll collect the spoon and start tearing themselves. Mm. Oh, yeah. You're putting one leg here, putting one leg there, putting one hand there, and you're I, always... I'm going to hold you there because you're leading exactly <laughs> to where I would like you to go. All and right. therefore, my next question is, who are the people that are most prone to burnout? People most prone to burn out mm -hmm. are people who are always perfect in their own ways. Perfectionists. Workaholics. Workaholics. Pessimists. Uh, pessimists. People who take no for an answer. Who don't take no for an answer. They're always on the go. People mm. with type A personality. Okay. They're always wanting to achieve everything. Mm -hmm. I must get this done. Whatever task oriented people. Task oriented. They're always goal oriented and mm -hmm. they have to ensure it is done. And mm. it is, if it is not done, they don't want to hear anything outside, it is done. Mm. So such people are always prone to burnout okay. because they fail to recognize when they are. When there's a time to take a, time a break. Take and a break. I imagine that micromanagers will fall into that category but because it's a micromanager that will go take the thing. Okay, you're not doing it well. I'm taking over the um, job. Exactly. Whatever they've delegated still comes back. Exactly. Wonderful. So. Now, as a pastor's wife All right, and a professional psychiatrist, can you share with us some scripture characters that suffered fatigue or burnout? Because I think there will be a few that we can learn from. Yes, we mm -hmm. do have from the scriptures. Um, let me start with our father, mm -hmm. Moses. Mm -hmm. You know, when he was saddled with the responsibility of um, taking the children of Israel from Egypt to the promised land, mm -hmm. it got to a time he was like, oh God, am I the father of this? <laughs> 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 so when I read that scripture at times, I wonder, mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. if one is being saddled with a responsibility that is much bigger than the shoe he can fit or she can fit, mm -hmm. you tend to have burnout. out, mm -hmm. you know? He was so he was so burned out. He was so fatigued that he had to ask God, "Am I the one down? Am I the father?" Of father of? Mm. But thank God for God. Thank mm. God for wisdom. His father-in-law was there to support him, to tell him, "Why don't you make delegations of seventies? Make mm. delegations." And you know that was how he was able to scale through. Also, we find Elijah mm -hmm. in the book of First Kings, chapter nineteen. Mm -hmm. So he was, he felt he was just the only one that was around to deal with the prophets of Baal. After he had dealt with them, killed them. So he was fucked out, he was burned out, oh God. Till the point that he was asking for him to die. Suicide out. <laughs> <laughs> just, just kill me, oh just God. Just kill me, oh, <laughs> just kill me. But mm. thank God for God's mercy. Mm. He, had, he was able to renew his sense of purpose. Mm. And thank God he was able to be rejuvenated as well. Even David too. He's also a character that we can always emulate from, you know. After he was, he went to battle, he was frustrated, he was so burned out that mm. he was asking God, my eyes are weary, mm. I have sorrow. Mm. So most of us do fall into such of this category, but mm. there is always an open room with God. Mm. Like we always have an advocate with the Father. Mm. Beautiful, so. beautiful. So now, I, I'd like you to share with us, you know, are there some scriptural rules which if we would just obey them, they can prevent fatigue? You know, so that at least that way, those of us, including myself, <laughs> that are working ourselves into the point of fatigue and tending towards burnout, are there basic scriptural rules, which if we followed them, either we can prevent okay. burnout and fatigue, or at least we can recover from them. Mm. Could you share with us some of this? Well, thank God Jesus is our perfect example in all things. Mm -hmm. uh, we thank God for his life. First, I would like to say that we find balance. You know, there's always a continuum to the extreme, either positive or negative. So our, our major um, ability, or our major capacity is to find balance, firstly, between work and rest. We must have a, definite, a definition of boundaries. We must set boundaries. This is what I want for this time. This is what I want at this moment. So it is our responsibility, it is our duty to find rest. Even Jesus told his disciples to come. Let's come apart. Um, in the book of 1 John, uh, sorry, 
in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, he told his disciples, after they've walked, they've talked, they've served the people, he told them to come apart and, and rest. rest. Mm -hmm. So it is essential for us to rest. If Jesus can tell his disciples to come rest, definitely anyone that is going or tending towards burnout should always find time to rest. Okay. And also, there is always an advocate with the Father. Mm -hmm. It is only someone who is proud, who does not want to, you know, delegate issues, that would always mm -hmm. want... I'm in all, I'm all in all myself, that would not want to delegate, would always, you know. So be like the disciples, they said, we'll give ourselves to prayer, exactly. but then other people can serve tables, other, you know, so that's delegation. That's delegation. Mm -hmm. So there will always, there will always be time for us to take our matters to God. Mm. Even as Elijah did, he took his matter to God. So we should always take time out, take our matters to God. This, I'm tired, I'm fucked out, especially most of us who are pastor's wife, pastors in the mission, Take time out to pray. Take time out to rest. Also, we have to reestablish our priorities. It is very, very crucial. Okay. Very, very crucial. You set priorities. Okay, this is what I have to do at this time. Mm -hmm. In the first quarter of the year, this is what I want to do. The next quarter of the year, I'm going to take a rest. In the next quarter of the year, I'm going to... So set priorities, set boundaries between work and rest. Also, we should seek a better approach. Mm -hmm. Matthew 7, 7 says we should ask. We should seek and we should knock. We must also ask ourselves, do I want to rest? Do I have, do I have, to, do I have to make everything, you know, at once? Mm. There's time for everything. We okay. have to ensure that we establish um, preferences to mm. all that oh, we do. Is. Okay. So, so if, if one could just uh, summarize before uh, I, we look at the consequences. So what you're saying is that there are certain clear rules in the Bible. Yes, that, that shows us. So first of all is observing rest periodically. Yes, so if we do that, we should minimize burnout. Okay. Second, you said learning to delegate. Don't yes. try to be all things all, to all, all people. All. Yes. Um, let know what people can do for you and then what you can what do you for can yourself. Do. Yes, um, thirdly, you mentioned the fact of prioritizing. So what must I do now? What can wait Till later, later, so that I'm not trying to accomplish everything at, at the same time. At least those are three clear principles. Then you add it to it. When you begin to feel overwhelmed, take it to the Lord in, in prayer, prayer because he will find rest for, for your you. souls and he can help. And sometimes actually God will send us the helpers that we need when all of a sudden the assignments are too many. Like Moses did not realize that there were other people that could take off the part of the job from him. Okay, so now, suppose some people um, are unaware of what the consequences and dangers of burnout and fatigue. So if, if someone was just going like on an express road okay. of fatigue, express road of burnout, what are the consequences if that person does not deal with it? And I'm asking you not just as a pastor's wife, but more importantly, as a psychiatric nurse? There's, there are lots of consequences. At first, the person feels overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Then consequently, there will be resentment. resentment. The person becomes picky, becomes irritable, becomes irrational in thinking, even to the point of hallucination. We've mm -hmm. had people who, out of burnout, they hallucinate. They have um, auditive hallucination, visual hallucinations. Can you explain that? That's a <laughs> lot of grammar. What's visual hallucination? What's auditory hallucination? Visual hallucinations are things you perceive to see that are not real. And they're real. not real. And they're not real. Wow. wow. And auditory hallucinations are the things you hear. You think you're hearing. You think you're hearing. But they're not. But they are not real. Mm. So those mm. are So when someone is turning towards burnout or is burned out, mm there could be hallucinations, mm. which is a mental breakdown. Okay. So such people should know that it's a consequence. And yeah. with that, you have to calm, calm down. down. Another consequence is there's depression, mm -hmm. there's anxiety. Mm. Um, it, destro uh, it, um, it destroys relationships, especially yeah. if you're married. Mm. You start picking with your husband, <laughs> picking with your children. They say, oh, mommy, she's just being irritable. You talk to her, she's always shouting. Even the dog will uh, <laughs> perceive. <laughs> The she's situation. always shouting and mm -hmm. you know there's reduced perf um, uh, performance yeah someone who is always at the optimum 
there will your always productivity be productivity will drop. Productivity will drop, mm. definitely. Mm. Mm. There is always physical and mental exertion. Mm. Um, there is insomnia. There's a whole lot of it. There's what vulnerability. Insomnia? Insomnia. In, in, in layman's language. In a layman's language is an inability to initiate sleep and to maintain sleep. Aha, uh -huh. so they so will have sleep disorder. Sleep disorders, mm, mm, you know, mm, they might not mm. be able to sleep. Some would say, I can just sleep for an hour over the night. So mm. you wonder. Oh my so it God. could be a matter of, you know, relaxing and taking burnouts away, consequences okay. of burnout. Okay. Also, someone could be vulnerable to all manner of sicknesses, yeah. hypertension, yeah. diabetes, mm. you know, cancer, even. Wow. So, wow. those are some I, of the I consequences. I pray that uh, God will not allow us go in that direction. Amen. But then, of course, that's why we're bringing this on. Yes, so, 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 I'd like you now, as we uh, begin to round up, what are the solutions? If for some reason or the other, we have run ourselves into a state of burnout or a state of fatigue, how do we get out of this unpalatable state? Because like you said, everyone is at risk. Yes, the individual having it is at risk. Family. The relationships, that's the family, husband, wife, whoever, colleagues are going to be uh, uh, facing uh, part of this. So they're, they're at risk. And yes, I dare say the society is at risk. At the risk more people large. that are not taking care of this of issue. So what are the solutions, um, the ones that we can implement and the ones that others can help us with? All right. Um, first is to identify the stressor. Mm -hmm. What actually is the cause of this burnout? Mm -hmm. Like I was trying to explain, is it a personality disorder? Is the person a workaholic? You identify your person and know what is the stressor, what is the thing what bringing, is causing, causing the stress? this stress? So identify the stressor. Identify the stressor, mm -hmm. the find boundaries. Okay. Learn to say no when you need to say no. Learn to delegate when you have to delegate. Know the ones you can take in. No, know the ones you can stop in, know the ones you can dish out. Take time out, take time out for breaks, take time out for vacations. I'm sure we are all entitled to leave in our working places. If it is two weeks off, two weeks break, three weeks vacation, six weeks vacation, just try and ensure that you get settled in your mental state, in your physical state, and you would see yourself rejuvenated and um, you, get, you get back on your feet. Also, you need to eat right. Mm -hmm. Most times, some of us don't eat a balanced meal. Mm -hmm. We don't eat balanced diet. Mm -hmm. we, it's not until you have the whole, you have zillions of naira, z zillions of money mm -hmm. that you take care of yourself. Thank God it's rainy season. You can take, um, what is it called, citrus. You mm -hmm. have abundance of citrus now. Mm -hmm. Take mm -hmm. tangerines, take oranges okay. and what have you. Let me just try and uh, summarize. First of all, it, it's important to know that um, according to 3rd John chapter 1 and verse 2, God wants us to prosper okay. and he wants us to be uh, in health. It, it, it's something that God uh, loves. Uh, secondly, he wants us to have life and to have it abundantly, John chapter 10 and verse 10, which means obviously if we tolerate burnout and we allow ourselves to be fatigued, um, it, it, it's not the best of things. The beauty of it is that we have discovered that as it happened to uh, Elijah, there's, there's a solution. God will not cast us out because we reached a burnout. God did well for Elijah. Even though he was suicidal and he said, you know, kill me, kill me. God said, you know what, I know you're a little bit tired. You need to take a break. So our sister here has told us very clearly the things we need to do. Um, just go on, on a break. And uh, during that time, set your priorities clear. Know who you are. Know what you need to say no to. And take the rest. Take the exercise and eat properly so that you will not destroy the body that is supposed to carry you through in order to deliver on destiny's assignment for your life. Now, before I ask our sister here to pray for us, from your record as a professional, what percentage of patients 
would typically recover from burnout and fatigue so that our people at least will know that this thing is not intended to destroy you or to kill you. You know, what's the proportion? So that people can go out there knowing fully well, yes, I may be in a burnout, but with God, all things, are, things possible. are possible. I can get out of this situation. I can get back on track and I can live a life that is free of fatigue and burnout. Um, I would say, rather than percentage, mm. I would say it's a concerted effort okay. from a person okay. who would recognize early enough that okay. he is being fatigued or she is being fatigued okay. and is tending towards burnout. Okay. So the earlier you recognize, mm -hmm. the better your rejuvenation, the, the better your chances of recovery. Okay. If the person still understands I'm fatigued, mm -hmm. I'm stressed, and I'm burned out, and fails to ask for help and fails to retrace her step or his step back, mm. the longer the recovery. Mm. Though it has been said that 30% mm. of people come out of burnout. 30? About 30, just Not 30. 70. Not 70. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so about 30%. That is if it has been recognized early. Mm. Would be a number of people that are listening to us right now. You have probably counted and you have seen that, you know what, I don't think I'm living my life in a balance. Some of us are already experiencing mood swings and you know definitely you're probably in a burnout stage. The beauty of it is I want to believe that 100% of us that realize we're in this state and stop pretending that there's no issue and reaching out to God and reaching out to experts that can help us, I know that God has the capacity and the capability to reinstate, revive, and restore those of us. I'm going to ask our sister here, who is a pastor, Pastor Mrs. Olubumi John, to please pray for those who are undergoing <laughs> fatigue and burnout. Please pray for us. Shall we pray? Our Redeemer, we thank you. The giver of life, we say thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you because all knowledge and all understanding comes from you. Thank you for the privilege and the grace of this moment. Father, we ask, oh God, please accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. As many that are going through burnout, fatigue, and stress at one point in time or the other, in all spheres of their life or in any particular area of their life, I pray, Father, give them the grace to recognize this. Give them the grace, oh God, to retrace their steps back and give them the grace to get out of every stress and every burnout in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that as many, as many that are even in need at the moment and are finding it difficult, we pray the breath of heaven will rest upon them. They will help, you will help them, oh God, you are the balm in Gilead. Mm. The Father, your balm will rest upon them Amen. and you will soothe them of every burnout, of every stress in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray your power rest upon every one of us Amen. that to recognize the stress and to get out of it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And for us to have a fulfillment of the purpose and the calling you have given to us. Amen. Father, please do so for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to say thank you very much for coming. We My really pleasure, appreciate you. And uh, hopefully someday, sometime. And in any case, I I'm going to encourage uh, all of us. If you have been blessed by this program and would like to learn more about managing burnout and fatigue, or if you'd like to share a testimony, or you even want to partner with us for promotion sponsorship, please connect with us on plus 234-812-402-0538. We will forward your questions to Pastor Lubumi John and also make sure uh, that you can get answers. You can also send us an email at info at theshapersact.org and we pray that God bless you very richly even as you do so in the mighty name of Jesus. Before we sign off, I want to invite you to join us next week as we consider another insightful topic that is anchored on the living word of God. Until then, I charge you today to apply all that you have learned so that we can eliminate burnout and fatigue and live in good health so that the destiny that God has proposed for our lives shall be fulfilled. Till I come your way again next week, this is one all our data, you're the shaper. Do have a wonderful day. Shalom.